The book Come As You Are by sex educator Emily Nagoski blends science, wit, and psychology to help us discover the beauty of, you guessed it, sex. A lot of people feel unsure or let down by their sex lives. Come As You Are will make you realize that it does not have to be too confusing. Emily Nagoski argues that sex in its true form is an art, which can help you learn more about yourself and create a beautiful bond with your partner. By transcending societal norms and relinquishing your inhibitions, Nagoski asserts that anyone can lock new and higher levels of pleasure. Here are the top seven lessons from Emily Nagoski's book, Come As You Are. Lesson one, know that our bodies aren't as different as you think. Why do men have nipples? This question is one of life's greatest mysteries. In a female body, we can understand the purpose of nipples is to nourish their babies. But for men, what are they even supposed to do with them? The answer actually isn't as weird as you might think. That's because every human being, regardless of sex, is formed with the same basic body parts. Those parts just rearrange themselves from person to person through a process known as homology. All fetuses have identical tissue for the first six weeks of a pregnancy. Regardless of whether that fetus will grow up to have male or female genitalia, everyone starts out with the same genital tissue. That's why male bodies have nipples, because everyone starts out with the same basic set of parts. All fetuses form nipples. It's only much later that a fetus's genitalia develop inside of the womb and is designated as male. Lesson 2. Understand your sexual personality. You can think of the human brain similar to a car having a sexual gas pedal and a sexual brake. Your brain is prompted to pump those brakes whenever it detects a threat, real or imaginary. That means that any stimuli, from a thought to a smell or any sensation you receive from your partner, can trigger your brain to believe that sex is not a great idea at the moment, and your brain then slams on the brakes. Everyone's sexual brakes and accelerators have different levels of sensitivity, and that's perfectly normal and not a cause for any concern. In fact, these differences form a unique sexual personality for each person. Lesson 3. Acknowledge that your sexual experience depends on the context. Let's say you're in a sexy mood and your partner tickles you. In that mood, this sensation would probably feel tingly and exciting. But if you were focusing on something important and your partner tickles you, you might get annoyed or even angry. This just goes to show that the context dictates whether a certain sensation is pleasurable or upsetting, and by extension determines whether you and your partner have sex or not. Lesson 4. Understand that stress is a sex killer. We all knew that already, right? That's because stress often makes sex sound like one of the most unappealing things in the world. And unfortunately, you can't put your body's stress response on hold or hurry through the process of decompressing. Stress from your work, family, or relationships can haunt and leave you shaking. And trying to have sex while going through the stress process isn't the best idea because you won't be able to enjoy it until the cycle is complete. You can't rush the cycle, but you can try doing healthy outlets to express your stress that may help it dissipate much sooner. For example, you can release tension through exercise, relaxing in whatever way that makes you feel most comfortable, sleep, or even screaming or crying. Lesson 5. Acknowledge that pop culture can ruin our sex lives. It's no secret that the media has an unrealistic representation of women's sexual appearance by perpetually portraying women in an unrealistic way. So it's no surprise that a lot of women feel insecure in the bedroom because they're measuring themselves against Photoshop standards of ideal female beauty. And it's very hard to feel sexy when you're overwhelmed by feelings of disgust about your own body. So how can you rid your life of these toxic influences? One great way to start is by tossing the magazines and start celebrating your own beauty. Acknowledge that your body and your feelings are normal. Lesson 6. Know that just because your genitals are responding, it doesn't mean you are aroused. If you're like most people, your partner's arousal is most likely one of your favorite parts about sex. It feels very good to know that you can bring them so much pleasure. But did you know that a physical response can sometimes be involuntary and does not actually mean your partner is aroused? This is especially true in the case of women, as studies which measured blood flow to the vagina have shown that textbook arousal responses are not always a good indicator of your partner's true satisfaction. Lesson 7. Don't categorize sex as a need like food or water. A common misconception occurs when we categorize sex as a need, like food or water, and assume that we're motivated to pursue it by an evolutionary drive. But sex is actually a desire, rather than something we need in order to survive, and this means that we don't actually have a sex drive, so much as a set of accelerators and brakes. The speed with which we get into gear or slam on the brakes depends on a wide variety of stimuli, which is determined by context. It's also worth remembering that stress and media representation have a significant impact on the sex lives of men and women alike. In conclusion, Emily Nagoski's book Come As You Are is a very practical and helpful guide to a more satisfying sex life. It presents different ways to unlock new levels of pleasure that will surely leave us satisfied.
What misconceptions do you have about sex? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.